Hey guys, this is Simply Imaginary People, Frankie, and this is part two of how to create clothing for The Sims 3. So where we left off after part one is that we finished our mesh in MD and we exported it out as an object. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Milkshape and we're going to go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, and we're going to import the object that we have. And it looks like this. So marvelous. Uh, Milkshape has four windows. You can see three here, and if you right-click on one of them, you can say projection and pick where you want to see. So I usually have one from the side, the front, the top, and the 3D window. So the first thing is if you want to zoom in, I usually press shift and I like drag my mouse up. That's the easiest. Or you can press shift and scroll. Shift just makes it scroll faster. And what you can do in the 3D window is you can right click and you can toggle this wireframe overlay. So I can either see the verts and the faces or I can turn them off. And also what you can toggle is show back faces, draw back faces. So if I turn this on, then where black is, is where my inside layer is. But I'm going to turn it off because then you can see here that my hood on the inside is see through. As I said in part one, you don't have back to faces so they just end up being see-through and you can see here that's why I can pretty much see into the back of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the groups tab and make sure auto smooth is off. Whatever the hell you do never turn this on it just ends up ruining your mesh. Then we're going to go to the materials tab and we're just going to delete all of these materials because then we have the normal gray of the mesh. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to really quickly model clean this whole thing. I'm just going to go to tools, model cleaner. This just cleans it up a bit. If a pop-up window comes, press no. No, no. Right, I'm going to have to delete materials again because I'll probably make them again. Right, so here we have our awesome mesh. And what we're going to do now is just go to tools, direct X mesh tools. And what you can see here is that this is our poly count. So this is how many polygons it is. Now Sims only has ID numbers for up to 9,000 verts and can only handle about 10,000 polys. So we are actually underneath it with 8,000, but the fact is that what we're going to do is we're going to make a second layer, like an inside layer, to get rid of our see-through hood, and that's going to make it even higher. Plus, we still have to add the Sims body, which is fingers and everything, so that's going to make it even higher. So 8,000 is actually too high, I'm looking more at around 6,000. So we have 2,000 polys too high. And the problem is, if you have too many polys and you have too many verts, is if the verts don't have an ID number, so they only have ID numbers up to 9,000-ish, and if you don't have an ID number, then it can't be morphed, because only those with ID numbers get morphed, which is why some of the meshes that have too high poly counts or too high vert counts explode, because those verts just can't get morphed properly. So this is too high for me. Now what I can do with the direct X mesh tool is I can drag it down a bit and save that. And I have to do it in bits, so I can't just go like this, otherwise it will ruin it. I can do it a little bit, save, and then I can go to face, smooth all and it looks normal again and do this again and again but this is tedious and it isn't a very clean way of doing it so what I like to do instead is go back to Marvelous Designer and click on my big pieces so this is a big piece and here you can see particle distance and the higher you make this literally the further apart the verts are and then the less verts are needed so usually it's about 20 I'm going to make this 30 I'm going to make this 30, to make this one 30, definitely going to make these ones 30. That will also be 30. And then make our sleeves 30 as well. Right, what you're going to do once you've done that is just really quickly press that button so that it looks normal again. You can see I've got some clipping here that's not actually that bad because I'm going to delete that later anyway. I'm just going to move this again so that the hood looks normal. So when you finish fixing it how you like it and reducing the particle distance for everything you can export it again. And again make sure your settings are like this. 
Okay. Now if I import it into Milkshake, again import away from object. And then if I go to Tools Direct X Mesh Tool, I can see it's now 5,700. So I'm under the 6,000 I wanted to have. So again, I'm going to go to Tools, Model Cleaner, No, okay, and then delete all the materials again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group everything. So I'm going to select this. Actually, first, I'm going to align normals. So to edit, select none to get rid of those dots. And I'm going to select parts like this part, usually the main part, and not usually you have one group for every fabric type you had in MD. So what I want to do with this is make sure you're on select here under model. Uh, what I want to do with this, I'm going to go to vertex align normals. And I don't know if you can see what it really did. It's, it's not so clear. You can see it made some areas a bit lighter. It usually gets rid of seams. So sometimes you have like this big line down here where you sewed stuff together and it just gets rid of that. I like to do that. Don't do it with the uh, this part yeah. So I'll show you what happens. If I do it with the piping, I usually get some horrible dark shadows around it, and I don't really like those. So I usually avoid doing it with that piping part. Right, so once I've got this, I'm going to go to groups, and I'm going to select all of them. So make sure everything is red, and then I'm going to go to regroup, so that I only have one group because I only want one group to carry on. So now that I've got my poly count nice and down, and I've model cleaned it, and I've aligned my normals, I can continue in Blender, because I want to fix the fact that these places have gaps as well. So I'm going to go to Export, Wavefront Object, and I'm going to export it as Puff2. I've already got some, but yeah. I usually keep a folder, and I have all of them in different steps, because then if I mess up something, I can at least go back. So, yep. I'm going to go to Blender. So what I'm going to do in Blender first is I'm going to delete camera, right click, delete that, right click, cube, right click, delete that. And then go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, and find the Puff 2 I just exported. And then I'm going to press 1 on my numpad so that it faces the front. And you can use Shift. If you like click the scroll and use Shift you can move it around. And then I'm going to go to these three little lines in the corner. I'm just going to drag this out so I have two windows. On this window, I'm going to click this box here, and I'm going to go to UV Image Editor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, and I'm going to import a body of a child with no clothes on, just so I have the body underneath. You can make these easily in a milkshake by combining the top and the bottom, or just ask me and I can send it to you. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the UV mapping first, because I think that's always a good idea. But you can also do this in a different order. So what I'm going to do to do this, I'm going to select out of my groups the one that's the body. And I'm going to go to the bottom here and go to edit map. So now I can see this is literally my body UV map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press image, new image. So I get this nice black image. And then here under the little uh, camera, go down. Go to Bake, and pick Ambient Occlusion with a 2 margin, and press Bake. Right, now what you can see is that I have literally black everywhere where my coat is covering the body, and white everywhere where my coat is not covering the body, so neck, back of the neck, and I have these spaces where there's nothing. And in these black spaces is where I can put my UV map for my coat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the other group. I'm going to go to edit mode. Here you can see the pieces. My sleeves, my hood, my pockets. This long thing here is the piping. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this little button here and then I can pick the images. So I'll pick the image I just made. So I need to place these parts in everything that's black. But I also need to go to image, open image, and 
I'll attach this image to the video, but you need this image. So you can place the UV map for tops anywhere in this red room and anywhere that isn't black on this image. So ends up swapping images the whole time. Right, to some general blender tools or hotkeys. B. B gives you this and you can draw a selection box. A, unselect everything or select everything. Then to move it, so I'm gonna, you can also use C to select, it gives you like this brush tool. Then to move it, I'm going to use B. I'm going to right click to get rid of the B thing. And I'm going to use G. G, I can just move it. What I can also do is I can press, click in the middle of one piece and press L. That selects the whole piece. And what I can also do is I can use, if I select it with L, I can use R to rotate it, Control Z to undo it, and S to scale it. Again, Control Z. Okay, just some general comments. Don't start rotating stuff. Because if you put a pattern on this later, just imagine this whole picture gets covered in a pattern. If I now rotate my sleeve sideways, then my pattern is suddenly going to be sideways on my sleeve and the right way up on the body of the coat, which is just going to look stupid. Same thing with resizing. If I resize parts I want to reco have recolorable, then it's just going to look stupid with a pattern because I'll have one part with a big pattern on it and one part with a small pattern on it, which just isn't realistic. So if you resize it, then resize everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start moving parts. So I'm going to take this part and uh, I'm going to try and stick it right in between here. Making sure I don't hit black. And uh, making sure I have at least a tiny bit of a difference to the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I open the other picture and I see, okay, I'm still in red, which is good because I need to be. And I'm not going over any grey or white areas. Now I'm going to select sleeve. And I'm going to start moving them. So I'll have sleeves here. And that doesn't fit underneath, otherwise I'll go to my hands. It doesn't really fit in between there either, so that's not good. start with a long part. There we go. And now this fits in between there. That. That. Ooh, just about fits. Perfect. And now got my pockets. Just stick those there. Now with buttons, you want to put a button picture over the top of the end so it actually looks like a button. But if they're this small then obviously it's going to be like two pixels and your quality is going to be crap. So what I like to do with buttons, I'm just going to move this. Piping because you're never going to put a pattern over piping only ever a color you can also resize individually but it still fits on mine so I'm going to leave it. Right so the buttons what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the one button and oops don't ever move parts of it. <laughs> I'm going to go to G and I'm going to lay it right on top of the other button. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that thing I'm going to make it nice and big, and I'm going to move it over here. Because, if I look at this map, I still have a lot of red space here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it really big, so that I can have a nice HQ picture of a button. Right, now what I've done is I've UV mapped my thing. It's only in the red area, and it's covering only black or, well, space where nothing is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to image, new image, okay? And I'm going to delete this body because I don't need it anymore. 
So just go to the correct group and press delete. Go back to your group, go back to edit mode, so I see all it. And then I'm going to go to this world map here and I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, environmental lighting, indirect lighting, and I'm going to put my samples up to 20. This just gives me a nicer, smoother picture. Go back to the camera, go back down to bake, and press bake. Should still be on ambient occlusion in two pixels. Probably going to take a bit longer because it's nicer quality. Awesome. If I now, when it's done, go here to object mode. I can now see this is my multiplier where you can see the shadows for under the arms, the shadows where the hood is laying or where the head's bent and where the pockets are. I'm going to go here to image, save as image, and I'm going to save it again in my folder as mpuff, just to multiply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file, export, wavefront object, and save this as puff3. I usually do this just to make sure in case I do something wrong the next step I still have the UV map version. Perfect. And in the next part I'll show you how to make the hood not see-through, but as it'll be too long I'll do that in the next part. So, see you later.